I was, I was born over the hill there, literally yeah. quarter yeah. of a mile from yeah. here. Right. And never, I've travelled but never actually moved away. Uh, Dad, in 1971, had a rush of blood to the head and decided he wanted to open a restaurant. He invested £400 of redundancy money in Ubiquitous Chip. 45 years later, it's still going, it's hugely busy, it's, it's what it is. That was Dad just having a crazy idea one day. <laughs> About 25 years ago we started Stravagan. Yes. Stravagan's an old Scots word. It's a wee bit, folk ask us what it means, and it's a wee bit like on walkabout. It means um, to have no real plan, to yes. meander and something will crop up. That's Stravagan, to go Stravagan. Uh, and it's kind of, we didn't know at the time, but it's fusion food. Uh, it's just kind of what we were doing. And a few years ago we opened a Vietnamese restaurant. So we kind of opened we do, we do what we want to eat. And, and what's your involvement with Let's Eat Glasgow? Were you one of the founders or instigators of um, About two years ago, no, yeah, two years ago, say, I was in mid-rant about five different things that were outraging me at the moment, at the time. And uh, some folk that I was with got chatting and out of that came this. There's loads of different strands to it, but really, I've made a living out of out of food all my life, and all the guys here do exactly the same thing, uh, which is great. I love it. I'm right up for eating. I didn't get this shape without eating, and uh, but we live in a town where an awful lot of folk don't have access to good food, or eat, or even don't have if they have access to it, they, they don't. Uh, it's just not registering with them. We've got chronic diet in this town and uh, so without being puritanical because I still love eating pies and all the rubbish stuff but the odd wee carrot or understanding how cut of meat works or growing your own if you've got the space you know it's really it's a simple thing that we're trying to encourage through the glamour of the restaurants so every penny that's made here goes out to people who are already doing good works with food and people in and around Glasgow. That's what it's all about. It's it's wonderful. I love that soft edge to it. So many food events are very much about promoting someone's business or maybe even just uh, making money. But this is uh, one of the few that's actually looking at helping someone else. Well, last year, we actually, we don't know how many people we did, but we sold 10,000 plates of food. Um, and after it, someone came up to me and said, oh, you've made a fortune today. And it was like, no, we've not made a penny today. We've been, and he just wouldn't, it wasn't understanding. I'm saying anything that we've got left is gone. It's kind of, it's a wee bit Robin Hood, you know. Uh, so this year, I think people have, have, have uh, I mean, there's an appetite for it. And, and the message is out there. It's a, it's a social enterprise. It's not, not for profit. At first, we thought that we could do both ends of it. We can't. We do restaurants. That's what we all do. But there's guys out there doing great stuff. So if we can fund it, then magic. It's a win-win. Yeah, exactly. And I'm not aware of another food festival that operates like this around the world. We just made up. I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's a jolly good, jolly good thing to make up. Um, I don't think we plagiarised this one. No, I don't think you did. And uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing because I know what happens in, in cultures that eventually people lose the benchmark for what food should really taste like. Good food, natural yeah. food. Yeah. And you're bringing them back to it in a, a recognisable way, I can see, because I, I see a lot of old recipes on the names on, on the menus yeah. and uh, recognisable dishes that they would know, but made with really good, fresh ingredients. We set no criteria. Um, last year I made eight, n nine phone calls to the, the good guys. The guys that, yes, make a living out of it, but also understand stand which way around a chicken goes, mm. know what to do with a carrot, they're not businessmen, they're not driven by, they've got five discos and they now want a glamorous restaurant, they're about the food. Um, so, if they're at the top end and pushing for Michelin, or they're at the bottom end and just banging out good pies and making some nice bread, then it's, as long as it's good food, we really don't care. So we've not um, tried to sway their offering. You get what they wish to do. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah. And the slow food hall there yeah. that has so many wonderful things in it, uh, is that sort of independent of what you're doing here, or is it, how does that fit? Well, there's kind of two halves going on here. 
come get a drink, have some food, meander about, and also you can do your shopping next door. Um, so there's local producers, there's various social enterprises in there, there's a scientist friend of ours who's trying to get folk to eat cockroaches. Mm. Not entirely my bag, I can see maybe it's the future, but not quite yet. So, and, so, and so slow food are there because it's all part of the sure. same, oh, of it's the same uh, um, ideal, if you like. Exactly, exactly. Um, it all makes perfect sense. Half the restaurants have been using that stuff for years. Mm. We've got growers through there. We have our own small holding. I, I mean, it, it's all the same stuff. If you've got a bit of land outside your house, you can grow bits and pieces. Uh, Even a balcony, pot plants. Anything, yeah. anything. Well, look, you're, you're doing a wonderful job with this. I'm, I'm just so impressed. Uh, what's what's next? Anything next planned for your um, rants? And <laughs> no, I'm trying, uh, I'm trying not to rant so much these days. <laughs> but who knows, by Tuesday maybe I'm ranting again. <laughs> All right. Look, I mustn't take more of your time, but no thank problem. you so much for that. You're very thank welcome. You. Cheers. Bye-bye.